Good morning. I would like to thank you and welcome give the floor to the Dean of the Faculty of Labor Science. Unfortunately, the interpreters cannot hear the speaker. Unfortunately, We cannot hear the speakers. I would give the floor to the Dean. And the Mayor. I would like to thank you for being here today. Today, this is a very heroic initiative because of the situation with the COVID. I want to thank those of you who have worked very hard to start with this project. And Professor Milagro Martí, she has been the driver of this initiative. I also want to thank the teams, Ms. Marta Pradano, our our advisor in this very complex project. I also want to thank the Deputy Dean for Research of the University of Seville, Mr. Fernández, for his work and contribution. This type of project requires the commitment of many people. We have made huge efforts, many long days, hurdles out of our control that have gradually overcome. But apart from the results of the research, I would like to highlight the support of the European Commission. I want to talk about the added value of understanding other ways of working and approaching projects which are very different in all the European Union member countries. Because even though we're all members of the same culture, the same way of understanding life and politics with capital P and policies for the citizens, when we approach challenges, we respond differently. So it's very fruitful and interesting to get to know the work done in other countries with the representatives because they do things in a different way and it's very enriching to learn from them. The project has obviously had projects, uh, sorry, problems derived from the research, normal hurdles that we normally have to face when researching, academic problems, but we have also had to face force majeure, COVID-related issues, which of course have had an impact on the project to improve it, to adapt to the circumstances. This has translated not only in a delay in some of the milestones of the project, but also we have had to introduce changes 
that have had an impact on the databases, on the surveys and polls we have done. The project was born in a very with good timing because digitalization was already part of the European Union agenda as one of the key issues to deal with in the future, but nowadays, digitalization is even more relevant because the process has had to speed up as a response to the COVID-19 pandemic and its consequent or subsequent new needs. However, I would like to highlight that even though digitalization has created a substantial change in labor relations, it should not be understood as a problem. It should not generate fear or doubts. Both workers and employers must approach digitalization with optimism, of course, with, from different views, but we mustn't forget that we have a human capital, which is the key element in our society and our society has to think that we are working for our citizens, the service of our citizens. So we have to be optimistic and understand that together with employment structures, new jobs will be created without obviously always having in mind the importance of training. Workers need to have the skills that are necessary and everybody inside social dialogue, public authorities, employers, trade unions and workers must join forces. Digitalization is obvious. The digitalization of labor relations translates into the introduction of physical contact of workers in a different way, not only with the workplace, but also with the other workers, which in practice means that there are many problems to deal with collective rights of workers and trade freedom. So we have to be really careful and pay close attention to that challenge. These remote relationships, these remote relations will generate problems and we have to ask both trade unions and employers that in the next collective agreement, they need to introduce palliation me palliative measures for these challenges on workplace, individualization, loss of collective identity. I mean, there are the unwanted consequences of digitalization. When we started the project, things were completely different to how they are today in local labor markets. There's been an acceleration of the digitalization, which we thought we Course, we, we had a forecast of having it as a much slower process, but certain types of jobs have erupted into our daily lives, and we have had to legislate on the go and generate new rules and standards and um, create new amendments to the collective bargaining. The need of digital skills is, has increased and all homes have uh, had to update. I mean, we will be talking about all these topics during the day. This is going to be, it has arrived to stay, it will be present in the future. And there is a clear commitment from our side. A social commitment. We mustn't forget that scientific projects make no sense unless they work for citizens. So digitalization must always be understood from the perspective of the humanities and to work for the service of citizens. Thank you. Welcome. I am sorry that we cannot share the civil hospitality with our project partners, but I'm sure that in the future we will be able to do so. Thank you.
Muchísimas gracias, querido decano. A Thank continuación, you very much, tomará la palabra Dina, doña Marta Pradanos González, representante del Fondo Social Europeo, que va a intervenir en el tema de la seguridad social. Representative of the European Social Fund, who Hola, will join us via email. Hello, good morning. ¿Se me puede ver bien? I hope you can see me. I hope you can hear me. Estupendo, muchas gracias. Thank you very bueno, much. pues eh, querría comenzar mi intervención like en español y un poco más Spanish, adelante cambiaré a, a inglés. Eh, mi nombre es Marta Prada, ¿no? My name is Marta eh, trabajo Prada, en la Comisión I Europea, en la European Dirección Commission General de Empleo. Y es un... I wanted to thank you for your invitation to be here today. And also, I would like to thank and congratulate the fantastic team of the University of Seville and all the members of the consortium who are successfully leading this project, which is very interesting. Thank you very much to the team, Alejandro Díaz Moreno. Thank you, Alejandro, of course, to your team. Milagro Martín eh, muchas López, gracias también, como se ha mencionado ya, este proyecto eh, said, se, está, se está concluyendo, se ha tenido has, muy difíciles, uh, inesperadas, has y esto ha requerido very una cantidad de trabajo extra por parte de todas las partes and we have had to work a lot so, Entonces, en nombre también de, de mi so on de equipo en la Comisión Europea, muchísimas gracias por todo el trabajo realizado. European Union, so I want to thank I you. will now switch uh, to English. I will wait a few seconds so that interpreters... Um, have some time and participants can also tune in um, the right channel. So um, my intervention is going to be very short, uh, but much will be said um, here today about um, skills and professional qualifications. So I have preferred uh, to focus on a, a different topic, which is the consequences uh, of digitalization on working conditions also what the Commission is doing to support social dialogue and social partners in their fundamental role to address and to manage uh, digitalization. And uh, very importantly, I would like to say a few words about what the Commission is doing to support member states, uh, employment, uh, jobs, in the, uh, in the current context of the COVID crisis that we are um, suffering. So, um, well, as, as you know, um, rapid uh, technological change and digitalization increases productivity and tends to have a net positive effect on job creation. But of course, there is also a flip side um, to digitalization because it enables the proliferation of new forms of work that quite often are not fully or adequately covered by welfare systems. And as a consequence, we have um, a growing amount of precarious jobs linked to digitalization. Uh, and a clear example of this is platform workers. Um, as Alejandro said before, digitalization was already a very important topic two years ago when this project was launched. And at the time, Commission, uh, Commission President uh, von der Leyen used to refer to the twin transitions, the digital transition and the green transition. So now with COVID, the importance of digitalization has been exacerbated. Um, so in the context of COVID, the Commission is providing um, a huge support uh, to national governments and member states in their efforts to save uh, jobs. The Commission has taken unprecedented action. I would like to mention SURE, which is the program of support to mitigate unemployment risks in an emergency. This program amounts to 90.3 billion euros 
uh, that have been approved so far to 18 member states to help protect jobs and keep people in work by financing short-term work schemes. It's the amount of money, for example, that Spain receives from the European Union um, to support ERTES um, and all those programs that prevent people from losing their jobs. Also, in the context of the recovery and resiliency facility, uh, 672.5 billion euros will support national efforts to strengthen jobs and economic resiliency. So despite the difficulties posed uh, to everyone by the COVID situation, uh, the European Union is um, living up uh, to its commitments to support member states in the context of this crisis. And a central element of the recovery strategy will be the European pillar of social rights. As you know, the Commission is preparing an implementation plan and the social dialogue and the role of social partners is a fundamental component of this recovery strategy. Uh, the Portuguese presidency has placed the social dimension of the European Union at the center stage of its program. And in the Porto Social Summit, which will take place in early May, the Commission will put forward its action plan to implement the European pillar of social rights. Like I said, it's the center um, cornerstone, I would say, of our recovery strategy and social partners have a key role to play. So the Commission has promoted the role of social partners for many years now. And this has been even more evident in times of, uh, in, in these uh, crisis times. Um, for example, when preparing the recovery and resiliency plans, member states are required to publish a summary on how social partners were consulted. So a little bit of recap on this. As I mentioned before, the European Commission is facilitating uh, a great deal of financing to member states to help them with the recovery. But in order to access those funds, member states are required to prepare national recovery and resiliency plans. And member states, member states are required to consult social partners in the preparation of those plans. So this, this comes to underline once again, the key role of social partners in the recovery strategy. And that will finish now my intervention with a very short reference to an ongoing commission initiative on platform workers. So as I mentioned at the beginning of my intervention, digitalization has some side effects in terms of precariousness for certain kinds of uh, jobs. So the commission is paying very close attention to platform workers. And at the end of this year, the commission intends to present an initiative on working conditions in platform work. This initiative is based on Article 153 of the Treaty on Working Conditions. At this point, we don't know yet which legal form that initiative will take. We don't know if it's going to be a directive or a council recommendation, but we are consulting social partners on it. So I, I uh, hope with this, I gave you a short overview of um, uh, the link between uh, digitalization and the current COVID crisis, what the commission is doing to support social partners and also member states. Um, I will, uh, I will conclude now. I wish you uh, a lot of uh, success with um, this conference and I invite social partner organizations present here today to engage actively in European social dialogue. Thank you very much.
Muchísimas gracias, doña Marta. Tiene a continuación la palabra much, el excelentísimo Marta, señor don Rogelio Velasco Pérez, consejero de Rogelio Velasco Pérez, Industria, Regional Minister for Economic Transformation, Industry, Knowledge and University of the Regional Government. Alcalde, rector magnífico, decano de la Facultad Rector, de Ciencia del Trabajo, secretario de la Organización Labor, de Comisiones Obreras para San Pablo y Tablada. Buenos días a todos, especialmente a Marta Pradano, que acaba de... Even though it was a digital presentation, it was very informative. I want to thank the Faculty of Labour Relations and thank you for inviting me to this seminar on the impact of digitalization of the economy on the skills and professional qualifications and their impact on working conditions and labour relations. We have had the University of Valencia, Comisiones Obreras and Airbus, they have exchanged experiences on different European countries, uh, such as Germany, Italy, Hungary, Spain. It has been selected amongst 130 proposals coming for many research centers of uh, social partners. I mean, I don't want to state the obvious. Up to two years ago, digital technologies were considered a tool that would complement many in-person activities, analogical activities, and that's a positive contribution. And social partners, universities, and workers would use these digital tools. But due to the COVID-19 restrictions on mobility, which is the lockdown measures, digital technologies have become a key element of all the activities, with no exception. Nowadays, companies sell in a different manner, look for clients and contact their clients in a different manner. Customers have access to an impressive range of services and products from their computers. So we believe that there is a fundamental role of a partner that explains this digitalization uh, and uh, an effect, which is the productivity increase. Both workers and companies use digital tools to increase productivity which was uh, heard up two years ago. This increase in productivity means that despite of the very serious economic situation, companies continue investing in new technologies. It has been said by many studies that technological sectors can, are more resilient to crisis because of what this point, increase of productivity that make companies more productive and therefore the productive fabric of a city, a region, or country is strengthened. So what are we doing from the public authorities? Firstly, please allow me to talk about the university. The university is playing a key role, not only in both because of the adaptation they have done in record time to new teaching methods that were completely unknown in the past. They have moved from in-person to online tools and activities. Additionally, and as a consequence of the strong demand from the companies of digital technologies, the university answers offering an educational catalog that is adapted to the market needs. I talked to the rector of the East Valencia University, and we said that in Andalusia, where 100% of scientists and engineers that graduate have a job immediately, there are companies who are poaching engineers from each other. There are companies which, before they settle in a space, they ask how many scientists and engineers graduate every year. I will need 150 this year, 300 next year, and in two years' time, my workforce will include 600 engineers and scientists. If the university is small, they can't do that. That is why they have to be coordinated so that in a specific location where there is a high demand of scientists and engineers, they should know that 
there is an offer from that municipality and from the nearby universities. Two more points on the role that we play in the public sector. We will present the aerospace strategy in Andalusia, which will be a landmark in the aerospatial sector in Andalusia. And we don't want this to be just a mere paper or a report. We want to implement the recommendations of this strategy. Additionally, in the next generation funds, the Regional Ministry of Economy has submitted projects for 667 million euros, specifically targeting the aerospace industry. In general terms, our government during the first two years deployed resources for 251 million euros for R&D, and our current budget includes 150 million euros. The goal that we are complying with at the moment is that each year the expenditure as a percentage of GDP increases in these tough times, and we will achieve it this year too. Airbus has played a key role in all this. As we all know, the aerospatial industry companies have a high technology component. They expand the borders of knowledge and they are key contributors to a positive dynamics of r and &I. This company in Andalusia is an industry with which employs 15,000 people, which is 27% of the aerospatial industry in Spain. I would like to finish by thanking the universities, Airbus, and other technology-based companies. I also want to thank the workers and the social partners for the big effort they are making to make sure that the situation we live in becomes normal and helps us to tackle the epidemic. Thank you. Thank you, Regional Minister. Now we give the floor to the Mayor of Seville, Mr. Juan Espadas Cejas in Seville. Thank you very much. Good morning to all of you, dear Rector, Regional Minister and Dean of the Faculty. And I also want to say hello to those of you who follow us here in person and also via streaming. In normal conditions, my presentation would be just to say hello to you and welcome you to the city of Seville to thank you, to thank the organizers, the University of Seville, the Faculty of Labor Science for this initiative and for the capacities to coordinate such an attractive and ambitious project in which the university and therefore Seville has been able to be working with universities and research institutes from Germany, Hungary, Italy, and Poland on a very special topic in the debate, in the social debate and the economic circumstances that we are living through. But of course, I cannot stay there only. In the current circumstances, I have to make an effort to stick to the agenda challenges and objectives in which when we take on board and responsibility in this project, despite of the circumstances, the adversity and difficulties to exchange information, to teamwork, this formula of working in research is key, sharing information, teamwork, and being able to identify different points of view, but above all, the richness and wealth that this human work means is key. And being able to transform that, which is an important element in this type of projects, in a digital project, fully digital, I guess it was, and through exchanging information via email or video calls, of course, this is a especially complex work. So congratulations for that. As the Dean said earlier, this has to be also 
something that has continuity because these collaboration methodologies allow us to get to know other cities and universities better. So it's great to give continuity to it, to continue working together digitally because they will ultimately benefit the citizens, the universities, and the cities, the cities which host these institutions. The dean and the rector know that the civil city strategy and the civil university strategy have a point in common, share goals for the future of territory to converge the goals of research, training, and creating talent in this territory as the needs and social economic challenges we are facing today. So this is a research work. So I think it is fitting to say that and to support the objective that is now part of the debate and which I think is key. Any initiative of this type has to conclude with going for the 2% of budget for R&D which as a, as a great progress of society is more necessary than ever with the current circumstances. And when we clearly see to which extent society depends on science and research capacity and resources devoted to the talent to solve at the end of the day, the challenges of our society, which can have a planet scale, a global scale as we see now today. The objective of this work and what is being shared today are a true challenge. The industrial revolution or the technological revolution, we always knew that would entail the changes in the regulation and the social interactions and in our lives at the end of the day. But nobody could know that in such a short period of time, this process, it could be accelerated so much. The president of the European Commission defined rather fittingly and with an eagle's vision in her term in the European Commission, the two challenges we needed to face and we needed to prioritize in Europe and being extremely efficient and effective Ecological transition, digital transition, these two revolutions that were mentioned earlier in on which we have been working for many years, but true, too slowly um, as a result of the needs that were coming up and the needs that would be acceleratedly present in our society, meaning everything to do with climate change and ecology. And this need change has been accelerated and by the health crisis and the pandemic we are going through. So more than ever, it is important to have certain basic elements very clear in our minds. Would we say that this has arrived to stay is something that we already knew. Deep transformations that we had to face in the future had to be done on the basis of the values that we wanted for our future societies. So we are sort of like going, doing it in a bit too fast because the reality forced us to do in a much faster way that we could digest. And adaptation to change is the big challenge of organizations and people, the labor market. And there is no doubt that when changes go at a speed, they identify more problems than benefits in the short term. And of course, we have, we all of us have to be in a situation to give our best. In that sense, what has been mentioned in the labor market, Dean, dear Dean, is we need to understand what skills, capacities, and qualifications uh, are needed. The academia, like this university, needs to introduce them in their syllabus, in their methodologies, so that people who graduate have that preparation fully covered. And there is a long way to go, dear rector. I'm sure you agree with me. I am a student of this university. I'm a graduate of this university. So it's a big challenge to adapt the knowledge base offered in this 
university to this new technological revolution. But I agree with you. We cannot leave behind the topic that this has to feed the individualism in society and leaving people behind. We need to share right? common strategies. Otherwise, the strategic plan of the city of Seville would have to ch be changed the name. Our strategic plan is called Shared Seville or Seville We Share. I don't want that city. I don't want to have people working in front of their computers alone doing exactly the same thing that they could do in, in common or with other people just from their office at home. I don't want that city. I don't want that society. I want technology to be for the service of people and not people for the service of technological advances. Not even competitiveness, not even economic efficiency can justify those changes. We can't be less happy than before because of that. So we have to do a deep analysis in our society. We need to use technology to live better and to avoid losing the things that we have conquered for welfare, well-being, and human interaction. And that is much more complex than what we can sometimes think. So in that sense, I think we need to encourage. And those skills, which in my opinion are still insufficient, I'm the mayor of a city who knows that the digital gap and equal opportunities, as we have shown in this pandemic, outcrop in an unfair manner in certain parts of the territory where they don't have the same conditions and the same access to the labor market because they didn't have all the opportunities they should have had in their training, in their education, or in their capacity to adapt to the changes that could have other citizens in other parts of the territory. So we have a lot of work to do, and I know it. We have to invest more in helping citizens to be better prepared for these accelerated changes, technologically speaking. And from the point of view of collective bargaining and social dialogue, we all know very well, and the former crisis proved it, that less collective bargaining and less governance from the point of view of the role of the social partners and economic partners when tackling deep changes and radical changes is not precisely uh, translated into better objectives. It's to try and have those objectives implemented in detriment of rights and social progress that we have achieved over the last few years. So we have to be able to conciliate to, with legislation or with just common sense and intelligence so that we can introduce the exchanges that are needed by the organizations in the trade union, employer and social partners world to the new reality, which is the true isolates and generates such a level of autonomy in time management and space management that it can lead in a certain point of time to a fragmentation of the interactions to the extent that we, we have difficult ways with is organizing the interests of many people from the point of view of the collective interest and therefore we defend their rights respect compared to interests, powers and organizations that are very strong which can impose their conditions. We can see it also with the riders, the conflict between the interest and the opinions of those that work in this type of uh, platforms and the regulators that want to see some progress in this area. And this is a proof of the difficulty of those processes. I believe this is highly interesting uh, subject and uh, Milagros and uh, dear Dean, I'm sure that we will get the result of uh, today's session today and the conclusions so that the rector in this city uh, that can become a practical laboratory uh, can use the best uh, tools, uh, the present and the future of society is at stake. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, dear uh, Mayor, and I would like to add some uh, comments before closing this opening session and uh, this idea of the shared city, and I like to uh, make some complementary reflections. First, I would like to thank 
the mayor and the deputy for being here today as a symbol to the support to our university and both have shared this opening ceremony showing the importance of the local and regional level. Thank you very much. They are both former students of this university. They are therefore at home. I would also like to thank the organizers of this project, the Faculty of Labor Science, Fernando Milagros, for their work. I would also like to thank uh, Comisiones Obreras and Herbas, our allies, for their participation. And today's session, in fact, the inspiration for two main reflections. The first deals with the strategy and the second about the studies carried out. As a strategy, I feel very proud that this is here in Seville, in our faculty of uh, labor works that has been the logistic support for this type of international project, as has been mentioned by Marta Pradano and by the deputy. This coordination capacity to be the leaders in this area of social science shows the capacity of Seville University internationally to lead, coordinate, cooperate, and share its knowledge. It is also important to think of university as a plant for global knowledge in all areas. So when we talk about development and transformation, we think that is in the area of science and technology. And here we see the importance that uh, leader groups in social sciences are present. We received a grant from European funds in the field of humanities. And I should say that this is a global university and that's how we want to continue after five centuries in the development of knowledge transformation and therefore society's transformation. Thank you so much in the strategy and the capacity of uh, Seville's uh, university to give a response. And about the impact of digitalization, and I don't want to repeat any of the uh, mentioned uh, arguments, but as a complementary, uh, argument, I have a second reflection. Digitalization is necessary. It was necessary in the past and now it has become urgent. It is true that at a global university level and also here in Seville, as the head of the university, we have transformed ourselves in a speedy manner, providing a higher education in the very difficult situations. Digitalization has to be a tool uh, that is complementary to the development of a university that is uh, presential of all the studies conducted year after year at civil university. And of the present, uh, the future will depend, the future of our society in general terms. And therefore, I'd like to convey to you the huge effort of digitalizing and incorporating telematic tools and uh, platforms to complement to higher education. But it will be a mistake, those that think that this will be the solution, because it will never replace the on-site nature of university education. That's how many of us believe in the university area. And I like to say it very, very clearly here. That's why today, and I've been discussing with the deputy at the beginning of this session to get to know the current situation and according to the health authorities that are the ones that, the only ones that have to provide the necessary instructions. Uh, the idea is always to respect, as I said, health authorities, but uh, trying to get the uh, university as uh, presential as possible. And this leads me to our last reflection. To be on site in the university has a main uh, reason, as I've tried to uh, express before, but it also has an importance that has an impact on the wealth and the social development of uh, our environment. 
many people, many businesses, many services depend on the reality of on-site uh, university that is present in the city that generates uh, activities and businesses that wouldn't be the same uh, otherwise. But this on-site nature has another level, another layer. Certain businesses or industries that are important for the development of society are not located uh, in any geographical place, but they choose a specific places, places where knowledge is generated and where there is an education of professionals for those companies. This has been the case in the last century in our planet. And that's why to have a powerful University of Seville leader in some European programs allow us to attract talent and companies uh, in the future and to generate wealth. And this is the role of our university that we will uh, continue developing in the next few years. After one year of pandemics, I like to convey a message of hope, hope for several reasons. First, we have learned a lot and we are now in better uh, place to tackle our problems. Hope because the program H2020 has concluded and the University of Seville has been able to capture and implement projects as a leader in our region, in our regional government. And now there is the new Horizon Europe where there will be possibility to develop knowledge and wealth. And uh, as Marta has also mentioned, we have from the European Social Fund, there's a special interest to give back with the recovery projects uh, to create the transforming uh, opportunities. And the university has to be there and the university is at the service of society and institutions so that these type of projects can really be carried out. My last message is that we should have a common project. It's not the time of struggles between the national, regional, or local level. We should send a common message. That's why University of Seville is at the service in the local level with yes, uh, city hall. We will have a pact, an agreement between the university and the city, and the mayor has already mentioned it with two strategic plans for a common objective. And we have large projects to transform our city. University of Seville is the coordinator of one of the European alliances selected by the European Union to develop this project that has to transform the higher education in Europe. The UNICEUS project has six development poles, will also be coordinated by University in Seville in contact with other European countries, and will develop one of those poles in Seville that is related to the development of the smart city, the uh, smart uh, transport in a city, energy efficiency, the use of renewable energies, and this is a grand opportunity. So we will present at Seville Sport in the next few days a project where the headquarters of this development pole will be located at the port and with our allies. Of course, Airbus is one of our main allies in this project. We hope we will develop this activity that is so important. At a regional level, David, you know that together with the two main inter-university projects, one related to digitalization, another the development of sustainable campuses for the next decade, of course, always remembering ODS. Here we have presented a group of uh, proposals in order to transform our city with public and private investment uh, with this logistic uh, plan in the south of the city, in the port, that we will uh, present it in the next few days with the president of the port's authorities. As far as we know, we see that there is a great opportunity. 
there is also in the Cartuja Island in the north, uh, close to the technology park that the deputy and the mayor know really well. And we should be able to capture funds that will transform our city in the airspace um, industry. We have a large project uh, with Airbus, and I'd like to thank for their effort and cooperation that always have kept with Seville University. We have been leaders in Captain European funds in relation to technology development of um, unmanned uh, planes, and Seville has been a great protagonist in this field. There will be thousands of drones built in the next few decades. We want Seville to be a production center. We have the knowledge, we have the drivers, we have the space. We have a mayor and a deputy that are knowledgeable on those projects. Let us work together. And in these same lines, we should create a development a, a pole in uh, agricultural industry, another field in which we are leaders among the 50 in the world in the Shanghai ranking in the area of energy together with this pact uh, with Endesa about university and city, we can participate in a project where University of Seville can see analyzing energy and transport uh, matters so that there is um, progress in the development of uh, smart cities in the next decade. We have undergone difficult times, but there is hope, there are lights, there is a light towards the future. So all society and all the members of the panel and also the organizers of the session, I would like to thank them for their work and please, we are eager to get to your conclusions. Thank you very much and congratulations.